I think it's very important, but MRD negative, is it really MRD, a patient cured when they're MRD negative, or we just don't have a sense enough assay to pick up the residual cells? I think it'll be an important question, but I wonder but about that. In, in the clinical terms, yes. uh, MRD negativity in ALL, yes. if you achieve it after, 48, uh, after 28 days, yes. tells you that you're responding fast yes. and deep. And okay. when you look at clinical data, it's clear that the outcome is, is better, much better. Much better. Yeah. So Especially in the pediatric ALL, I believe, also. And also, yeah, and in, in the pediatrics, well. yes. it's clear, and Very we are clear. seeing it in our trials in adults. It's almost, you can tell, if you look at the national study with pediatric protocols with in a young adults, the, almost most MRD patients have not yet relapsed. It's a short follow-up, right. but the right. relapse rate is significantly low. So it's an important yeah. clinical. There's a lot of problems of measuring MRD, Absolutely. but as a concept, it's important. Right. Let's move on. Actually, a very exciting area now is with respect to uh, the FDA granting breakthrough therapy designation to three separate CAR-T therapies chimeric antigen receptor T-cell therapies for use in patients with relapsed refractory ALL. And what's exciting here is that I don't think, we don't have one standard approach to the CAR T-cell type of therapy. I think that we're seeing maybe a very uh, rapid uh, progression. We're seeing now companies who are getting involved with developing CAR T-cells. And I'm not quite sure how far we're gonna go. I think it's exciting. I think we're seeing proof of concept. But the question is, how are we going to fine tune and optimize? Are all cancers going to be uh, prone to responses by uh, taking patients' own T cells and making them target against a specific target on, in particular, we're talking heme malignancies, but I've heard of other malignancies, other cancers may be good targets as well. And I thought, since we're going to be talking about ALL, I'm going to go back to Dan and ask him, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the preliminary success and what your experience has been at uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering with this treatment. Yeah, there's, there's three places to do it, in, including us. So first, what is CAR T cells? Again, this is normal autologous B cells, but as opposed to blinatunumab, or where you modify right. them in vivo, right. here you take the cells, the T cells of the patient, out of the body for, uh, uh, by leukophoresis, and then you genetically engineer them in the lab by inserting a gene that on the one hand will recognize the CD19 epitope on the leukemic cells, and on the other hand will activate the T cells. Now this, this takes some time, and the, maybe the commercialization, the, the time will be uh, uh, shorter. As opposed to blinatunumab, which is something on a shelf, you can take it, it's a drug, CAR T cells need time to, to produce it. So it takes sometimes four or sometimes six weeks. I think that will get uh, shorter because there's a lot of quality control. And so now you, uh, you give the CAR T cells back to the patients, the number of cells, the timing of the cells, if you give all at once or you separate them or if you check there's a response. There's a lot of little technical things that need to be worked out. But the preliminary data are extremely uh, uh, interesting because they prove the concept because yes. the complete remission rate in these patients is 90 percent. Uh, that's in ALL. In right. ALL. Now, we don't know if it will be in other uh, cells, but in ALL, in, in, it is 90 percent in all places. And but then, let me ask you something. So we talk about, you know, we talk about cancers that might be more indolent. I mean, life-threatening cancers are the aggressive acute leukemias. I think they differ greatly from, say, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. The patients that are not end stage are very poor prognostic, or follicular lymphomas. Large cell lymphomas also very refractory. Either you live or you die if you're not cured. But I guess that's my question to you. A CR rate is good. It's a first step. But let me ask you, what has been your experience, or what is the experience with respect to how durable yeah. these remissions are? Because I think that that's the problem. Just because we have a CR rate, that's the first step. Yeah. The second step, are they durable or not? Yeah. First, to go to the yeah. more uh, slow growing, the, yes. the, we, we, we initially started with CLL. Yes. The responses were not as good as we see. Now, the duration is, is a little bit unclear. If you look at the studies from Penn, which is mostly children, they yeah. have long-term uh, response durations. In fact, you can identify these T cells because they're genetically marked, so it's easy, and you can find them for more than a year. Okay. In our experience, which is mostly adults, 
uh, we can say that the six years, six months survival is about 70%, uh, which is higher than with chemotherapy. Okay. We are not sure yet that this is uh, a curative approach. We also see that uh, after several months, the modified T cells eventually disappear. So there might be something to do with what gene you're using or something related to age. But that's right. something that we need to be working and, and on. And I think there's another issue I've heard uh, different people speak on this uh, with respect to uh, at Seattle. Um, um, Dave Maloney, for example, has been working in the field also. And my understanding is that once you've given, say, a CAR T cell therapy, you can't then go and give another CAR T cell therapy again afterwards. It doesn't work. I don't know if that's maybe specific to certain CAR T cells, but I think you got maybe one chance at it. I'm not well, sure. We've done it More twice than, okay. in some patients. Um, Successfully? I, or? No. Okay. I, it's very few. Uh, the toxicity is, is very high. That's the, right. the, the cytokine release syndrome. It occurs in about half the patients right. when they right. really are sick. Uh, you cannot do it outside of a major center. The patients go into the ICU. The second one, yes. the cytokine release syndrome is related to the tumor burden. So in the our, more tumor burden, the more... The, so you, right. the best patients are patients that are MRD positive. So they still yes. have disease yes. and they become MRD uh, negative and the toxicity is as usually a fever. Yes. The neurotoxicity is yes. something that is, is worrisome. Can you explain the neurotoxicity then? Not to you? clear. It, yes. Is it the question as the T cells entering the or, perhaps, or yeah. perhaps the cytokines? Because we know the cytokines, right. we measure it, the IL-6 and IL-2 go very high. What have you seen in the patients? I'm sorry, Dan, to interrupt. So what kind of symptoms do these patients have? So it's mostly a change in mental status. It's not uh, focal. So the two main symptoms is seizures, but okay. mainly change in mental status. In fact, you can stop it. And when we, when somebody is on free pressors or is <laughs> in, the change in Amazing. mental status can happen over 12, 13, 12, 24 hours. We will stop it by, we try first with the uh, anti-IL-6 receptor. Many times it might work, but if it doesn't work, we have to give high doses of steroids. But then there is that you're blocking the treatment, so we don't like to do it. But if, there is, if the toxicity is becoming too dangerous, that's what we do. And I've personally had to make that decision. So it, it is an extremely, I, I think it, it, it reminds me, I mean, I'm a little not so young. And when <laughs> I was a fellow, it, I was in the early days of bone marrow transplantation. Yes, yes. I think with the CAR T cells, we are at the early phases of learning how it's done. But as a principle, I think it's extremely promising. I think also with CAR T cells, uh, I've asked some transplanters, colleagues of mine, an allogeneic transplant, could we potentially look at getting a graft versus tumor, graft versus leukemia, graft versus lymphoma effect without the risk of getting a graft versus host toxicity? Could that maybe replace maybe allogeneic transplant in the future if it works well enough? Yeah, well, there's a couple of obstacles. Yes. That, because uh, you're doing an allogeneic uh, CAR T cells, yes, you yes. can take it off the shelf. That's, that's uh, one of the abstracts of yes, this ASCO so, this but year. In, yes. When you do autologous, you have to prepare it individually for each patient. Right. So you need this time yes. to prepare it in the laboratory. And that could be a limitation from my understanding is not every single case you can prepare, you can actually generate. Sometimes the T cells cannot be grown. Sometimes you're yeah. not going to get a, a product at the end. But if you have a, a, an entire shelf of these allogeneic, and, and actually it's fascinating, you don't have to be HLA compatible because they can block the actual alloreactivity and you can give it to patients that are not even HLA uh, so, compatible. So the problem we see yes. with waiting is disease progression. Yes. You need four weeks and you need to keep them uh, because the disease can progress. So we use uh, chemotherapy. You don't need, as opposed to transplant, where you want patients to be in complete remission, you don't need a complete remission. You need just to reduce the tumor level to the minimal that you come. You don't need a real complete remission. And that's mostly for safety and, and probably sure. for efficacy. Two comments, Dan. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about another type of immunotherapy, actually antibody drug conjugate, the inotuzumab ozogamycin in ALL, and maybe just mention briefly what is mogamulizumab, a CC4 antibody this also. I won't talk about it. Yes, okay. So I'll, I'll just talk about inotuzumab. Sure. sure. 
so, so those of you who remember the what, the, the pharmacy named Mylotag, yes, it's 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 antibody. It was using AML with the anti CD3 33 combined with a very toxic toxin called calcitomycin. calcitomycin. And so this is a similar concept, but the the target is CD22. It's a very good target because uh, it's present on almost every B cell. And I just want to mention, all of these treatments that I've been discussing are only for pre-BALL. They don't work on TALL, and 25% of our ALLs are yes. T cells, so just remember, they don't work on those. Right. In fact, it's probably contraindicated there. Sure. Uh, uh, so this is a, a, a targeted treatment. It's, it's in a way you, you bind to the anti-CD22, this calcitomycin, which is a toxin, it binds to the leukemia cell, it gets internalized, and it blocks DNA, and that's how it does it. So it's an immunotherapy, but it's different than the CAR T cells that are really immunotherapy. This is a way of delivering a toxin specifically to the leukemia cells. There is a randomized trial comparing a, a single agent in atuzumab to a variety of chemotherapy agents. The, the study has been closed and we are anxiously waiting for the results. The phase two uh, data or phase one data show a complete response rate of between 40 to 60 percent. It's not clear exactly sure. and it's not considered curative. I could just briefly mention uh, Moga Molizumab kind of hard to pronounce, say that quickly three times, yeah. is an anti-CCR4 chemokine R4 antibody, and it's being evaluated in adult T-cell leukemia lymphoma. It actually comes from, uh, I believe, in Japan, and in Asia, it's FDA approved with respect to the treatment of patients with uh, adult T-cell leukemia lymphoma, as well as, I think, other T-cell uh, uh, PTCL. It is not yet FDA approved in the U.S., and there are studies ongoing, but I think what a limitation there is that with respect to these type of agents, we have significant uh, immune suppression with drops in normal T cells and the risk of opportunistic infections a reality. But, you know, we've actually worked with alemtuzumab or Campath for many years in the past. We see all patients already immunosuppressed. So with, res with respect to monitoring the patients and giving them uh, good supportive care, antifungal, antiviral, uh, et cetera, type therapy, we might be seeing more of it in the future. 